speed of sound. Steve, I know you, uh, like an insight to my, um, musical taste. Always. Right. But that's my favourite Coldplay track of all time. I just thought I'd, uh, just throw that in. Not a fan of clocks? Uh, no, I think I, uh, I uh, overplayed uh, Parachutes a little bit and, uh, but, uh, so that's my favourite one. I like it. I'm, I'm afraid to say I'm a bit of a Philistine when it comes to Coldplay. That sounds the same as all the other ones. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to meet these boys one day. <laughs> yeah, and they're well, saying- I'll tell them to their face. I don't care. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm Ricky Gervais. A little, uh, funny little Wurzel type voice over there is Stephen Merchant. And with us are producer Carl Pilkington. All right? All right. Whenever we say producer, of course, that is in inverted commas. Yeah. Done with the fingers. Well, he, uh, he didn't have it. I wanted to play some off my iPod today to record it because they didn't have it here. Uh, it's a great track called Anthony and the Johnsons. He didn't even have the lead. He went, right, it's difficult. And he, and he went, is it any good? I went, yeah, it's really good. He went, well, why haven't we got it here already then? Oh! <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the, yeah, that's the paradigm, is it? If X Man hasn't got it, it's no good. Four non blondes doing well, is it? That's still in the cupboard, is it? Unbelievable. We're a little bit annoyed today, aren't we, actually? I'm really annoyed. Yeah. All that stuff we did last week, um, uh, that Landau sent us some sparkling wine, and we thought, right, we're, well, you shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. How many times did you mentioned it? I like twenty mentioned times. It twenty times. We we uh, well, the finale was hitting Carl on the head with a cork. That's on the website, by the way. Okay. RickyGervais dot com. Go there and see Carl being hit in the head with a cork. Right. Yeah. We and we said, look, send us free stuff. We'll talk about it. Nothing. The 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 the. I mean, literally is nothing. Empty. The cupboard is bare. No one has thought. I tell you what. There's, the, there's, there's those guys from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rick. We are taste makers. We're yeah. opinion formers, you and yeah. I. Yeah. And you know, you'd have thought if anyone was going to send us some free stuff. Yeah. You know, I, 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 it makes me fume. And well, you know what it is? It's right. because people, PR people and that, they've realised no one's listening. But not only are we going against all our principles and losing our dignity just for some free stuff. And integrity. And integrity, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We're what? going against excellent policy because I mean, obviously they would have got thousands of pounds for Landauer to be mentioned <laughs> last <laughs> week. On, 20 right. times. No, it wouldn't have. It's 40 quid. Right? Fam, right? <laughs> it's 40 quid. Yeah. For a, 40 quid for a nine minute advert. <laughs> exactly. So advertise your quality <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. Jeff's Garage. Cheaper than some other garages. <laughs> uh, it, we do, we, uh, anyway, uh, uh, actually, Did if there is a- Did we play an advert once for a <laughs> tattoo parlor? <laughs> yeah! Do you remember that? I'm sure we played an advert for a tattoo <laughs> parlor. <laughs> what, who can, what tattoo parlor can afford <laughs> to advertise on a radio station? Unless it's a tin pot one like this. Oh, God! Oh, I've got good, some good music today, though, Steve. Oh, really? I hope so. I'll be the judge of that. Go yeah, on, well, go well, on. Well, well, ACDC. Oh! Have you got a bit of, uh, bare skin you need, uh, colouring in? Come along to, uh, Ron's bike shop and tattoo parlour. He'll write mum on your hand and give you Harley a tune up while you wait. I can't believe no one wants to advertise with us. And that only costs what, 20 quid? Yeah. And they'd play that I in mean, I way. turned down millions of pounds to do adverts because I think it's beneath me. I thought, and I thought last week I'll give a little bit back. I'll give, I'll excite all these people who want to get a bit, they, Nothing. all I'm thinking is, Steve, either we, our cash rate's gone down, no one wants us anymore, mm -hmm. right, which is impossible, surely. I would've thought so. Or, we're on a tin pot station that no one listens to. Now- Ding! <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm having to hold on the pop shield of this mic, because it keeps falling off. It's embarrassing. This it's whole awful. Embarrassing. I mean, uh, oh, God. Well, Carl, what, what are your thoughts? Why have you stuck it out here? Uh. Nothing better coming in on this one. Well, I'll tell you why, because you're always on holiday. You don't do a lot. Oh. You get paid, you know, well, did not he, really? He's a moany. I don't know. I mean, he doesn't try and get on at all. He doesn't deal with people. He moans about everything. And, uh, you know, so he's. I'm alright. I've got my own little room and that. Yeah. <laughs> like a cage. It is like a cage, yeah. isn't it? And he can shut the door, shut the door. If Pete walked by, he can shut the door. He doesn't want to look in. He's like a, he's like a miserable old chimp. Did you, we notice today how much he at is Simeon, isn't it's he? It's very strange, actually. Um, we maybe should try and get a picture on the website because Carl's arms are particularly chimp-like. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> really very Because he's got that sort of, he's got long downy hair. It's and not the like, long extended knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And his totally round face that sort of the chin goes back and the, uh, the dome of his cranium. I think, quite seriously, I, I know we sort of share about 98.5% of our genetic material with um, uh, bonobos and chimpanzees, but I think he's got a little bit more. Yeah. I, I honestly think he's a little bit of a throwback. Just his line, they just kept to this sort of, really the ugliest one in the cat. Yeah. And the tree, and he really didn't, he didn't come out of it. I'm not saying you are, you know, I don't think you'd, well you are, yeah, you're chimp-like. No, it does, it does annoy me, 
me air annoys me on me body and that. Because I've got, I've got, like, air on me, on me little toes and that. Have you? And on the legs. Uh, would you, like... do you, do your little toes, can you pick things up with them? No, that's right. Okay. Well, that's, that's, what? that's the finale of this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. gonna see if he can play a record and put the fader up From using... a tyre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, swinging, swinging a tyre. Just using his toe, his hairy toes. Yeah. I've sort of got air all the way, but then it just runs out where it should be. On the I know. Yeah. Just... And do you, is this part of the reason why you're always uncomfortable about, you know, being nude or around na naked people? Uh, is that partly the reason, do you think, because you look so grotesque? Well, when I'm on holiday, I don't really like wandering about without a top on unless, like, it's a quiet beach or a, whatever. Sure. There's so no, what would you normally no wear? Sure, I just have, like, a nice sort of light, summery, sort of linen shirt, maybe, just yeah. a few top buttons open. Yeah. But, I don't, I, yeah, I don't like, the naked body isn't that nice anyway, is it? You know what I mean? Whatever it is, if you're a cat and you're shaved, you don't look that nice. <laughs> You know what I mean? But with I, mean, I think you'll it. find a cat is naked even with its fur on. The cats don't wear clothes. No, but what I mean is a, right. bald, a bald cat isn't that good. You know, you no. know it does me head in that I'm bald. I'm not, a, you know, I wish, if I could have hair, it would be nice, but that's like... Would you prefer it? animals to wear clothes like Mickey Mouse does? <laughs> <laughs> or Goofy? You know that I don't like Edith and all that, we've done it. But don't you think sometimes you could sort of like... Maybe, uh, um, I don't know, fancify a, a little bit. Like, um, if, if there was such a thing as a, an ape, um, salon, and there isn't, Carl, <laughs> there isn't, right, um, would you, would you, you know, give a orangutan a, a trim, maybe start with his hair, cos some of those look like they're going bald, but they've got a we comb should, over, they don't should they? just have a shave. <laughs> when it's like that. That's what I did. Just take it back. <laughs> and the underarms as well. Yeah, they, they've really got a lot of underarm hair. Um, even the women ones. Really? Yeah. That's disgusting. I know. I don't know. I don't even know why they breed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they get they laid some of those horrible old, uh, hairy ginger orangutans. <laughs> yeah, they are particularly grim, some of those. I know, yeah. The big ones. I know, Ginger yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be happy, can they? What is that? What, why is... Where did that happen, the, the ginger thing? Why do people give them... Like, hard time and that. Well, you just gave them a hard time then, so why did you do it? You no, were just flying in, were you, to a... People, people do sort of give... I, I, don't, I don't understand why, but ginger people get quite a bit of stick and I, I've never understood it. No, I was doing it, it's just, I don't know why. I they don't do know. They do I don't know, it might be historical, it might have been because... I, I, I'm sure they don't everywhere in the world, I'm sure it's probably... No, they are, they're always... I've, I've said to you about even, like, ginger cats are always fat, because they, they're sort of sick of it, probably. Wait, 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 wait. Ginger cats, what do you well, mean they're when you see a ginger cat? They've been eating, like, because yeah, they're upset, they've been bullied. Yeah, they're You never see, like, a thin, happy ginger cat running about. He's always overweight and looking a bit fed up. It's just a good point, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously, it's a good point, Carl. It's a point. So, last week, the Chinese don't age well. Now, anything ginger, including cats, yeah. No, I'm no. sick of it. No, but I'm just saying. Are I, you I don't... ginger? Would you like to take issue with any of uh, Carl's points? <laughs> 83 XFM is a text. You can text us. Maybe you've got. Maybe you've seen a thin ginger I'm not, cat. I'm not having a go though. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's weird how, how people give him hard time. And it's, uh, if I could have air, I'd go for ginger air rather than being bald. Really? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Landed from Ben Folds on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Out of facts, mm -hmm. never mind champagne and freebies like that. Just forget that. We're not doing that anymore. It didn't work, okay? But we are still in demand. Got a fax here, right? Uh, so guy says I produce a program for the BAS scientists, right? Wintering in Antarctica. Now what this bloke is saying is there are scientists, right? Um, researching in Antarctica, and they're soon, they're already locked away and sort of like out of touch because they can't get to them, right? But they're soon going to be living in 24 hour darkness because through the midsummer here, it's, it's darkness for 24 hours for like three months and Jeez. they're totally cut off and he's trying to get some stuff together and he wants us to record a message and it said, um, uh, every year, um, uh, they, they choose a celebrity to do something, a message, uh, uh of, uh, of their choice. They had Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, Jonathan Ross, this year Ricky is the popular choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm up there with Rolf Harris, David Attenborough and Jonathan Ross. In, in terms of the vote amongst some scientists stuck in a hut <laughs> in Antarctica for three months. I so, think they just, they've just got cabin fever. So that's, another po so that's another poll I've won. <laughs> Uh, a British <laughs> Antarctic scientist in a hut pile. If I was trapped in a little room with <laughs> several other men for three months of pitch darkness, oh. I, 
sexist. But, or, or indeed women. Yeah. I can't imagine why I'd ever want a message from Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> what would Rolf, I mean, David Amber, fascinating. Well, I Jonathan assume Ross it is the site, it's the, it's the animal, that I, I assume they're researching penguins or something, aren't they, if they're stuck there. Or maybe but what's seismic activity, or maybe polar, uh, uh, shift, I don't know. Possibly if you were researching kangaroos. Yeah. Strange oh, well, he, know, he knows about all animals, doesn't he? You can take him a budgie with a broken wing and he'll sort it out. Or he knows a man who does. Sure. He can, you know, he'll, he'll sort that out for you. And they do a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why yeah. you wait? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but anyway, I thought they want a five minute message. We can do better than that. Let's dedicate the whole show to them, Steve. We can what? Dedicate the whole show to them. What was it, trouble with my diction? A little it? bit. I'm just thinking again, you know, we've got to slow down because <laughs> these guys are there, they're, they're working, they're busy. They're used to, uh, like speaking eloquent yeah, <laughs> English. Yeah, exactly. They're used to talking to intelligent, yeah, educated people. Yeah. So Carl should be something of a surprise <laughs> to them. I imagine they'll just flood back early and come back to study him. <laughs> So, this is, uh, this, this show is dedicated to all you sight- I know nothing about them, I don't know how many there are, I know they're just, as I say, in a hut somewhere, presumably with a laptop, drinking, uh, hot chocolate out of steel mugs with- <laughs> Just looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. on the internet, are they? Oh, are they not? Well, no, there's no the phone laptop? line. Well, well how do they charge up the laptop when it runs out? Well, they've probably got generators. They must have other stuff. They've they, they got a telly and that, haven't they? Of course they have. No, for DVDs and things. Well, they could probably, yeah, they could probably have a, uh, a DVD player that, that would run off a generator and stuff. So they can play, I don't know what we're giving this on, CD or something. Mm -hmm. But, um... Mm -hmm. And what are they... Having that enhance your life, though, that you, like, two months has gone, you've sat there, you, you, you're chewing, um, Kendall Mint cake and, uh, uh and just looking round at white walls, right, thinking that the thing's gonna come in any minute and put you <laughs> out of your misery, yeah. right, and you go, all right, lads, it's here, what? A five minute message from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who? The, uh, fella from the office? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. I mean, so, yeah. I don't know how I can enhance. I mean, I, I go voted, into- One of them's going, I voted for Ricky Martin. I, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I don't understand, um, what they're researching. You say penguins, but that's just a hypothesis. Well, they're assuming that, because it's Antarctica. Where, where the, uh, the penguins live. Is there anything else there? What else is going on? Well, there's presumably climate differences and Well, yeah, because it's a, it's, it's a landmass, isn't it? Arctic's just on ice and Antarctica is actually a continent. It's a landmass, so there's stuff there. But presumably not in the winter. I imagine it's like ten foot of snow and really not a lot happening. Sure. I don't know what they're researching. They could be, it could be, uh, 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 astronomy, as I say, it could be some sort of seismic thing, it could be just testing polar melting, it could be, it could be penguins, I, I have no idea. I haven't got the information. Uh, I, I don't think I wanted us to go into what they're doing. <laughs> they, they already know, yeah. They probably want to know what's happening in the world for, oh. Well, we, we've got the man here. That's an interminable five minutes for them. They've already, we've already wasted <laughs> that five minutes. <laughs> they, <laughs> they're gonna put it on excited to hear from you, and they've just got five minutes of but us discussing on, what though, they might be doing. What I'm worried about is this bit, so, well, for these, for these ten people there, we've just annoyed the two hundred listeners we've got. <laughs> Because they're thinking, what's in this for me? Well, we'll have fun along the way, and what I think we're doing, they, they've been stuck there, as I say, they're out of touch, they don't know what's happening, so Carl Pilkington is the man, um, we're gonna have a break, we'll have a song, maybe some ad breaks, and then Carl is gonna let these scientists who are stuck away in the darkness know what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Is that all right, Carl? Well, I, you know, I don't really follow the news, so oh, they probably play a record. More. I was gonna ask what's been going on. <laughs> <laughs> a glorious day. Well, it is a glorious day, Steve. Brilliant. Every day's a glorious day, isn't it? Well, it is when I'm with you. Yeah, love the world. Yeah. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilgrim's, by the way, XFM 104.9, um, etc. What's, what have they missed for the last, uh, just, just, just do the last few weeks, what have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers, they haven't got telly. What, what's the, look at him, he's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what, what do you understand? Think what, what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on, on the news and that, what's, what's gone on in the world and that. Y yeah. Uh. Well, or just things you've done personally. I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. Pope's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, li I like it. Pope's dead. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like they're listening and they go, what's happened? Pope, the Pope's dead. <laughs> well, don't say it like that. Break it to us gently, Carl. 
Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it, and it pa you panic a bit when it's the breaking news, and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go, Pope's there, and you go, well. So you've just used that short, sharp tactic. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like ripping the pastor off quickly. It, I just said it softly, no, Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you're all, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like there's millions of people that had gathered in you know in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about you remember we talked about the Queen Mother mm. and they were queuing up queuing up queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like the state. four hours. And to once get a again, glimpse. I couldn't help but if they popped him on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled him past <laughs> everyone else, <laughs> they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah, you know, once again, people not thinking, they're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, what, like, what like students and ragweed exactly. with a with put a bed it, down Oxford Street? Those novelty beds. They're all dressed in kind of cardinals gear. Yeah. Just, you know, trundling him off and down the, yes. But it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said, they've now got a new Pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being cute. <laughs> 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 oh, God! So, who have we offended? I, I mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's never, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about, about offence, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Sam and Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good but, that he can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, why couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes, he, goes he, he, <laughs> he goes there a lot. He goes there a lot. That's why. <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, right. and we've we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps. Oh, he's not like raffles there. though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it? It's, it's own people. Put let's put this in context. You know, he's not he's not a villain. But sometimes when people leave. Groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet. <laughs> Isn't that a witness re uh, <laughs> relocation <laughs> protection scheme? <laughs> but because, because there's only about eight people live in this village, it's not worth, like, the, the, the like corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the it's village? A, it's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh... <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, do you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's stopped doing it now, Has he? Stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good, alright, so the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's not like this well, the day. We're not going back. There's a foot long spider on the loose. Are these people bright though? You, well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level you or two. They're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro yeah, they're, they're pro oh, Carl. This, I'd say this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist there, watching yeah. this, finding That's out right. what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little talents. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else, what else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? Yeah. We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83XFM, I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say, but no. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Uh, get back to you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger, from the Bible. How, I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, uh, I've heard that. But, sh I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. What and he's pro he was probably fed up, and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. 
What did he do? Presumably he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's what did he do? What he, did stitched he, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Did he do it for forty pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently. Um, Incidentally, the... if you'd like us to uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for forty pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch. Eighty three XFM, uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but so that's so that's one one explanation. There's another one here, which is uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick because in in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. And that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Uh, Eighty three XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, uh, no, 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 they, no, they might be true for both of those. I mean, the tr the point is that if either of those are true, they were already being picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, 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 maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some uh, uh, a little bit. So if off. he was bald, then old bald people would be like, "Yeah, get our time on that." Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, so t t play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? He eats chicken. <laughs> rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope uh, I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. I'm right. Right. You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley, uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor, electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter and so on and so he's saying uh, they do listen they can't they have the internet so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet and uh, if you get the chance say hi to francis and the rest of the winter is for me sure no problem yeah thanks james um but yeah there they are that's what they're doing that's what they're up to but, but why why are they asking you for a message though when i mean have, have these people got families and that or are they convicts or <laughs> <laughs> no what do you mean of course they've got they probably do get messages from their family <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know, like you see it in, like porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them, yeah, and they sort of look a bit fed up on that. Is this message that you're doing for for like people who d don't get a letter in the post from? Brilliant. So they they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves. Yes, sir. I didn't get a message, today, sir. <laughs> yeah, I've got a message, Hargreaves. <laughs> I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And I give it- Don't talk. <sighs> Don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Well, what's annoying me is it, right? They're saying they stuck over there for months. But it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah? They're well, I'm wrong. To, listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done and go home. Well, that's so, well, then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then, yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play a record. Well, hang on, before that, here's a good point. You've had a long time to research what's been going on in the world. We've just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> XFM. Morrissey, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I said, I don't I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So. I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, don't even no. But, uh, tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, he's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh, this, this isn't, this no, isn't, better, this better, isn't broadcasting now, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something, well, the talk! Fact, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. 
What? Tell what? It was what? on the telly. It was on the telly. And but what was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you mean to be telling them what's happened in the world? T tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo, right? And, uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid. It's really sad. It was on Channel 4 and that, right? And, uh, Kids born. You sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right? Momo. It's called Momo. Isn't that yeah. a Black Music Award? No, no, right. Little little fat baby and that, and uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies, right? And uh, one so of them. They're in danger. How fat? Are you not telling me what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone. It was. It was only two. And uh, th there's there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they like and, endangered? Uh, is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried. Is it like a conservation campaign? They're hunted for their flesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's just sad. If you, I know. I see this you shit laugh, that, but, but you, if you'd you seen it, you'd go. Oh, it's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it, and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you, there's three of them in the world. I, d I st okay. What else was on telly? Uh, the uh, something I watched the other night. That was good. Uh, again, you know I learn stuff from the from the telly. I don't watch the news. Yeah, well, you don't right? learn stuff yeah, from the telly. Yeah, yeah, you, you, what, you told us there's a fat baby in well, the world. Forget about them. There's in, a spider. In, a spider eats chickens, and there was a fat kid. That's forget, all right. Forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do. Right? <laughs> Iceland. But um, but what's the name? I tell you what is interesting, Steve. What? Um, I didn't know that much about it. Or autism. Okay. Oh, good. It's just some more entertaining stuff on XFM one hundred four point nine. Just to cheer up people. Go on and what? What? Go on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. Is? Right, Jack, autism. It scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and I mean, now we're going to touch on a really, I mean, no, I uh, said, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, then. Tell, me, tell me your insights to autism. Right, well, it, there's this, it, again, Channel 4, coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> But what's the name? It was it's the attention span I like. Ah. It's these these people who uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And uh, they sort of take in a lot of information. They get sort of a bit. They get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He sort of the the cameraman was saying to him. Uh, so, you know, why, why are you standards on that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the programme was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's, it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like, like Rain Man. <laughs> but if you, if you, if you can take it's Rain Man. No, I'm he not. has special autistic powers. <laughs> oh, God. We were sent for Rain Man. I, I don't know what to do. So I don't know you what to do. So but there's other things. Mastermind. So if autistic Sorry. mastermind, he'd well, be what dynamite. I'm saying is, don't be watching EastEnders, though. Sort of, why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. He's wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a, it is a disability. No. Yeah, well, I don't there are other things, and they're, they're not, uh, it's, it's, it also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as, as ill-educated as I am on the subject, but I think one, there's degrees of autism, I think some are higher performance than others, there's other, there's other issues with it, it's not they just, they've just got good memories, they don't go around doing tricks for people, because they can remember stuff, there are other, there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, I mean, they did, they seemed a bit- You watched the programme! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in? Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that the, other, that other little bit, yeah. But the main, the main bit of it was he can soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying it didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is I brilliant. This is just like, uh, I, I, this is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. And no, I'm, I'm gonna it's, sit it's, back it's, now. It's, it's, I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna defend you no, no. or explain anything. No. Just tell me, go on and tell me about the other disabilities no, what, that are what, worse. What, no, what I mean is, how people c can sometimes easily get mixed up. Um, 
how people are scared of like a cyclop. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, he's got a disability. A bloke with a bloke. Who's with a, scared of a cyclop? No, it's Apart just from Jason and his Argonauts. <laughs> where have you, where, where's this Cyclop that you're scared of? No, I'm just saying in history and in books and that. No, 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 not in history. H h history happened. Yeah. But what just... are you thinking of? You're, you're mixing history with Greek mythology and Roman mythology and every other type of mythology. Well, what do you mean? There wasn't really a giant Cyclop that went round picking up ships and throwing them around. That's not history, Carl. Do you think Batman's history? <sighs> <laughs> no, but this was, it was ages ago, wasn't it, when we were sort of No, I'm not saying it didn't happen ages ago, I'm saying it didn't happen. Well, he might have done. There's no, I mean, what's so ridiculous about a fellow with one eye? In the middle of his head, and he's big and scary and lives in a cave. Why is he scary? Because he's got, what, if he had eight eyes, I'd be scared of him. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's got a dis- uh, oh, we'll talk about it in a bit. I'm XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. And over there, Carl Pilkington. Can I just remind people that- A man um, so stupid, it isn't actually offensive. Mm. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, no, I just wanted to remind people that they can get in touch, uh, on the text, <laughs> 83XFM. You'll need that, uh, text number shortly, because we're gonna be playing Rockbusters very soon. Um, Gav has texted it, texted in, and he says quite simply, What's happened to the webcam? All I can see is a bold monkey. <laughs> um, well- you're absolutely right, we'll try and get that sorted out for you. But, uh, we're rock- we're rock busting now. Do now. Should we do it now? Say it up now. Okay, great. Yeah. So well, just, you well, should just remind people, Rick, for, uh, particularly if they're trapped in Antarctica for the next well, three months, what this game is. Well, this is, um, uh, um, blockbusters, um, just totally ripped off, and, um, the clues are bands and artists. Um, they- Carl says they're cryptic clues, they're not cryptic clues, they're more like, what word am I thinking of? They're tenuous, um, some of them don't work at all. Mm. Um, so it's- it's really, are you in tune with a shaved monkey? I mean, it's nearly embarrassing to get the clue. I pride myself on that I don't really get them. And I- I'm- I'm sort of proud of that. Cause you shouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I think I've given it a, a big sell. Yeah. Now, you do win tat today, but the big prize is going forward to be in the draw in, um, five weeks' time, when there's a- a signed, uh, Homer that I got Matt, uh, Graining to draw. If you go to rickygervais.com, you can see him drawing it. It's an original- Well, is uh, it, if they want to see it, they can go to xfm.co.uk slash ricky, and it's actually- just click on it, you can have a look at it. Oh, you can see all the pictures there, can't you? There's also a signed, um, Nigel Tufnell, um, poster, uh, and, uh, us three as, um, flanimals. But there's a little, actually, video clip, I was on rickygervais.com, oh, yeah. you can actually see Matt Groening, um, uh, drawing it. Well, so those, those prizes are the ones, that, the big prizes you can win in five weeks' time when you, if you get to the grand final. In the meantime, uh, it's the usual selection of mediocre gifts which will be given away. That we found in a draw that people have sent us yeah, to give so away. First up, we've got uh, the, um, I think, J well, I think most people agree, the mediocre John Travolta film Ladder 49, which I think right. barely made it into cinemas over here. No. Uh, we've also Ooh, got on DVD. And, that, what were you, and we're giving that away. <laughs> we're giving that away. Brilliant. On DVD, oh. uh, the TV series Grumpy Old Men, which I think is repeated every <laughs> single night on BBC Two. Oh! And, uh, and, and, and that's that's free as well, is it? Yeah, oh, that's free. Oh, well, okay. Well. Right. Uh, we've got the complete third series of Alias. Great gift, um, only if you've seen the previous two seasons, so, um... Is that the one I'm in? I don't know, possibly. Uh, French and Saunders at the Movies, a collection mm -hmm. of all their hilarious movie mm -hmm. spoofs. Um, again, on television, I think, every Friday. And, uh, the TV series Operation Good Guys. You know, fine series, but you could see that on UK Gold most nights. So, so um, once again, an excellent... But, look. if you win all those and take them straight down the record and tape exchange, you will be able to get two albums that you actually like. That's exactly right. So, well, people send us then, so they sort of get bigged up on the radio, so that's done. We don't need to, <laughs> need to worry about that. Angry! So, uh, anyway then, three, three clues. Well, hang on, that. let's play the jingle. No, I haven't got one. Have you not got a jingle for Rockbusters? No! Well, do one quickly, then. No. Okay. Uh, uh, Rockbusters. Brilliant. Alright, so we've got, we got three of them. Uh, Cryptic Clue and the initials, the band. It could be a band or an artist, we've done all that, haven't we? Yeah. Alright, first one. Uh, the fella oh, for f let his wife know how he got the bruise on his leg. Right? Give us that again. The fella let his wife know how he, how he got the bruise on the leg. He got a little bruise. Hey, yeah, it's, it's all, all imagine that in the Times crossword. You read it again, it's slightly different. Every time I look back at this crossword, it's slightly different. All the words change. The it initials, can't be cryptic. The initials there, C L. Right? C L. Fella got a bruise on his leg. He let his wife know how he got it. What's going on? Right, <laughs> Yeah. All the muttering! And Sef what's the next, uh, cryptic one. clue? <laughs> Second one. That, uh, that Potter lad had, uh, a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards and that, right? He had a lot of bottle. 
playing with the wizards and that. What's, what's all that about? <laughs> yeah. T Who the hell's what's all that about? T B there. Band or artist, the initials T B, that Potter lad. He's got a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards. Mm. And the uh the third one, uh the Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. Oh. What, what, what do they need? Right? The mm. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. The initials T M. Right. Eighty three nine three six is the text number. Um, we don't want to receive emails from this because we can't be bothered. So just a quick text. <laughs> Make sure you include uh, all three answers. We're not interested in this. You've only got, you, need, you need to get all three. Yeah. But but the winner may only get two. But oh, it's the first. It's the first one with the most right answers. Yeah. Uh, and if you want all those all those DVDs, hey, this is a box set. To be fair, that's pretty that's a pretty good prize. That oh, one. Oh, you could probably get you could get two, uh, two two CDs when you take that down to record tape exchange. And about, you don't, don't need to see the first two seasons because you won't know what's happening anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Um, I'm excited to think that there's um, some people now in uh, Antarctica just scrabbling around to get a pen, yeah. just trying to figure them out. You know, that that'll, that'll keep they'll they'll probably uh, stew on that for the next <laughs> two months. <laughs> <laughs> XFM. Gorillas, Gorillas, on XFM, 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with the, uh, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Carl, okay, we've got to sort this out, we didn't meet again this week and this is a shoddy show. I thought we had a sort of framework for it but, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I uh, thought, be, you know, Carl could sort of tell him what was going on, he doesn't know anything except watching telly. Late night telly on st strange channels, like he gets all his information uh, about the news on Anna Nova and, I mean, I, I even tried out because um, Monkey News last week was awful. It wasn't Monkey I mean, News. It wasn't Monkey News. It was. I, oh, I, I can't remember. Away, it. I've been away on holiday. Brilliant. Yeah, and the, the Monkey News stops. Uh, um, I, I phoned him up there. On there was a, there was a front cover um, of the I think it was the Telegraph one day this week, and um, it was an ironic story. It was a fluff piece, but it was a funny story. It was about a um, a monkey in a uh, in a zoo that had had a a. a a ruck with its father because it's adolescent. It was like the equivalent of like sixteen to eighteen, and it had a fight with its father, and it escaped. It ran away, and it was like you know an interesting story. Yeah. I phoned Carl up and said, "It's a monkey news. Um, a monkey has escaped from its cage after an argument with its father." And he said, "What was the argument about?" <laughs> I mean, he thinks like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Amazing. What was the argument about? Like, the zookeepers are going, oh, look, oh no, he's brought up his untidy room again. The father, oh, look, he's caught him smoking again. Oh. I mean, what do you mean, what was the argument about? They have fights. They oh. have fights and then it ran away. His dad wanted him to go to college, but he just wants to quit and get a job. <laughs> yeah. And he, he fancied a monkey in the other cage. And the father was saying, she's not good enough for you. No. Oh. So what was it about? News today? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of monkey news. You got a little bit of monkey news, right? Yeah. You've redeemed yourself right. then this we, week. We've got some stuff there and that. Uh, what else has been going on? You were, uh, what are we going to talk about now? Sort of got, sort of head's gone now. Your head's yeah, got gone. monkey news. Yeah. And, why uh, is your brain, why is it, you, f it seems like since we've come back on air, you have become dimmer. I mean, it is extraordinary. It's like it's like BSC well, has kicked or in. Or did really we are. just forget? We just forgot. Maybe what? it's been a long time. We've forgotten just how stupid he is. Yeah, yeah. it's like, proper. Do you mean it's it's the silences? You know, yeah. he forgets we're on the radio. There's just I know. Dead it's, air. it's unbelievable, and no. it's it's our name uh, on I this. Know. They put up a. But oh, as I said before, you know, he is he is. Uh, 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 no offence. He's he's not a bright bright lad or educated or anything like that. You but know, some things he says uh, does border on the retarded. I've been trying to take in too much information though, that's that's the problem recently. Well, I said to you last week, I've been like reading more books and what have you, and trying to take in too much, but the problem is, like even, even watching telly and that now, Suzanne said to me, you know, stop doing that, stop watching telly late at night and going to bed, because it's, it's making your brain too active. <laughs> and I'm sort of- Heaven forbid. And I, you know, I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't, and then when I wake up, I'm thinking, she, she had a go at me the other day, right? Because it was the night after watching The Fat Baby, right? Woke up in the morning and, uh, she had a go at me because as soon as I woke up, I said, um, it was something like, how can you freeze time? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, aren't you going to say good morning or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to burst! Just imagine it, right? It's, a, it's like the sun comes out through the window. Oh, she's like, Carl's like his little head, his eyes open, he goes, one of those floppy night hats. <laughs> How can you freeze time? 
Oh, God! But it's because, like, whatever, the night before I might have heard that on the news or whatever, and it's just been sort of whizzing round my head. Sure. And, you know, <laughs> it was a big debate, I think. They <laughs> found, they, have they found a way of doing it or something? What are you and talking about? They've done something about freezing time and all that. Uh, the, see, this isn't information, this is nothing. That is nothing, that. They've done something about freezing time. Imagine Jeremy Paxman coming on, going, well, I had the issues tonight, said something about freezing time. <laughs> it's, you you uh, think before you talk. No, but I, I don't worry about how to do it. I just think about what effects that Oh, will. they haven't asked you to get involved. Well, this is what Phew. I'm saying, though. You Phew. can explain it. It's a, it's a tough thing, isn't it? But what's the point of me worrying about It's not about a that? question. Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen any ghosts, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> And the Johnsons. Hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Interesting. Hope there's someone on XFM 104.9 and Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life because he saw on the website they do a, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. You check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. You could just sort of say, right. How would um, they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website. So you, you're on the journey on the bus thinking, in about 20 minutes I'm going to have a finger up my arm. But they're doctors. Yeah, but just They're not doing it for a laugh. They're not filming it with a two-way screen. They're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more. They're <laughs> up. Oh, it's prostate. All right, out the, again. Out the, again. I'm just saying, in the day, the sort of. Do you think they're in the pub going? Here he comes. It's Pilkington. I have my finger. It was <laughs> <laughs> Do well, they allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to do it? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's, that's worse. Though. You're sounding. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested in because you know. Do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse thing? Of well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right, do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport, you know, and you're a woman, they send in a woman person to search you. They don't, they don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? I yeah, mean, they, they probably trust someone who's gone through, uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? you're talking about this doctors all the time coming out in the papers, or they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever, or, you know, it's all, well, you're always well, hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is, the reason why they do that security, because there's, there's lots of security people and they can, you know, for your own, you know, for the, the you know, um, your own modesty, there's a female one to search females and a male one to search males and that's fine. But there, there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your arse and testicles? Do you want a bloke or... It, you know, it, you, you accept got it. long fingernails? They don't have long fingers. What do you think of this this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella Deville with a with a, with cleavage and long red false nails. Going, hello, love, bend over. This may hurt a little bit. They're, they there's there's gloves and Vaseline. You, it, it, I mean, uh, this I'm I don't believe well, there's two of you now in the room, Carl. They're doctors. They have to. They uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't dress with some fingers up people's asses. You're a very well informed gentleman. What about this sort of thing? <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Yeah. Um, would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know they catch it early, and that's it. They fit. They feel up there. But if you've got a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and <laughs> have a feel around them. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, uh, if there's you know if there's a doctor who can, then they'll put me at ease. I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people, or something in the world, isn't there? Sixty billion, or uh, something. Wow. Well, six billion, something. Yes, you got it. Right. He hit it. Well done. That's good work. Right. So yeah, this this six what six billion did I say? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, you want to box the phone up. <laughs> 
to assure you that the finger at the bum thing's not painful and that it's necessary and just that, that it's not necessary, really. It's just that it's not an easy way round. Alright, what's you know the what phone number here? It's, uh, we've changed, haven't we? Oh, for <laughs> You're the producer! Here it is, here it is. 0871 222 1049, and I think you, you select option one. It tells you anyway what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP, <laughs> or, or you've, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean, we, we want a qualified doctor, really. Anything else is not good enough for Carl Wilkington. Um, just to, to uh, we'd love to talk, you can ask him all the other questions. Because, you know, Carl, as I said last week, he, he, he doesn't, f um, feel his own testicles because he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well, I've got a very slight pain around the genital area at the moment, and I'm not- I think it might be some kind of groin strain, but I'm a little bit anxious, not entirely sure Yeah, I is, feel- so. I, I'm- I, I, I- you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. And I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually- you, you, you're- I think you're in a pretty low risk area, aren't you? I'd hope so. You're coming out of the twenties, I think it's the- I think testicular sort of- I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. <laughs> Uh, they told what all they said was to me sort of like it's twenties and fifties. Mine, so like we're in. <laughs> mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's like when you're relaxing or <laughs> I was wearing shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Well, it, it was just a bit sort of a bit. I, I had shorts on all day. I'm happy. I'm walking about on the beach. What have you? Mm. And then at the night when I put some long trousers on. I, I was sort of walking like well, they, probably, they probably like stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you when I was about 18, I was scared. <laughs> I, I, I went to, uh, the doctor, I, I felt a pain, right? And, uh, I was, because I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain. I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up to, through the urethra, either. And, uh, he went, Finger up the ass. He said, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> so, uh, we want a doctor like that. So, what's the phone number again? It's, uh, 0871. <laughs> Two 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 one zero four nine. A qualified. What, what do you mean the balls drop though? We've got to come back to this. I don't know. They just felt like uh, it's not too bad at the moment. I was all right on the way in, but it was I, just, I, felt, I feel twinges all the time. But you never know whether it's just, it's just because they're. Well, but they felt like they weren't my own. Do you know what I mean? It, they sort of felt a bit like these. Were there wasn't baggage. a bloke standing really close to you, was there? No, you, you didn't just, get them mixed up. Just <laughs> on the way back, <laughs> on the flight back. <laughs> so Someone else has got. Well, well, do take a um, leaf out of nudist books. They just walk around. They, they've oh, got I nothing on them. About nudists. Why? Well, let's let's play this ad break and that. And Have you had another encounter? Well, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. Have you really? Uh, right, we've got a. Uh, 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 who's that on the line? It's Rob. Rob, and uh, are you a doctor? I'm a final year medical student. I'll be a doctor in two months. Touch wood. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So, um, uh, where, where do you study? Do you want to give uh, more details, or do you want to remain anonymous I as you're calling to? I study at Bart's Hospital. All right, great. So. Um, why do, uh, GPs, uh, sometimes put, uh, their finger up, um, a man's anus? To see what's there. You know, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got an enlarged prostate, you know, it's either that or they stick up a big tube and have a look up with a light. What? And it's easier to do that. Now, uh, are you, um, dumbing this down for us or are you going to foul your medical exams by saying stick up a big tube with a light? I'm dumbing it down. Okay, come on then. We're all intelligent people here, uh, and Carl. So you can you tell us what now, what's that called? It's called a sigmoid escape. Right. Nice. That was I a clever test, wasn't it, Richard? 12 inch long. Yeah. 12 inch long tube. I can put up there. So, Carl, would you prefer that or a finger? Well,. So do they, do they sort of do the finger first, and then, I mean, at, at what point do they say, hang on, we need a light here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's, it's normally if there's something wrong. But, so, so if I go then, say if I go to this well-man clinic, right, and yeah. uh, they go, yeah, the art's good and that, yeah, uh, finger, yeah. there you go, and then they go, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go and get me light and tube. I'd, I, you know, I could start worrying them because they've sort of found something. And they're, they're not likely to go straight in with the tube. They'll, they'll probably send you off some tests first. But Carl, the there's nothing. But right. you go to these places to, to, to put your mind at rest and to know where you are uh, with your health. I mean, it, it's not that you go along. That's, that's what most people worry about. They think that because I'll go along and they'll find something. Well, one, there's, that, that, that's, that's illogical. There's no, there's, it doesn't heighten the fact they find something because you go along. And two, if they do find something, it's a good job you went along. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I don't go to the doctor. But, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 
I, I've had that oh, done. I've you had... should be concerned if when they shine the little light in your ear, it comes out the other side of your ear. No. The other ear but comes right out the other side. That's but, when you should be worried. But Rob, right, you said then, if they, if they find something, they send me off for some tests. Why can't I just have the test without that and cut out the middleman? Do you know what I mean? Because you're wasting lots of money. There's hundreds of tests they could do, and they could do every test, and they could all come back with nothing, or they could do the finger up there and send you for the three tests you need to find out what's wrong with you. But in this day and age, with all the technology and that, and like brainy doctors and all that, the only way to find out is sticking a finger up there. What are you worried about, Carl? Is it fundamentally that uh, this doctor who's, uh, uh, um, has done six years medical training, yeah, is, is, is it embarrassing to have a man's finger up your ass? I just don't understand how you can get round to that without- But what don't you action. like? Is it fundamentally you don't like anything up your ass, or is it, uh, is it the fact that it's a man's finger well, up there? I, I don't like going to the doctors, it makes me nervous, because I think if anyone searches you long enough they're gonna find a fault with you, right? <laughs> and especially if they're going that far into you, they're gonna find something, and- Probably not. Well, you never- I, I just- I just don't- I, I don't know how to get round to that sort of- that point where you get a, what, what do you talk to the doctor about? He's like, all right, nice day. Uh, just drop your trousers. He goes, I'm just gonna, he says, I'm gonna just, um, Maybe uh, right, people just shut up and let you do it and then breathe a sigh of relief when you say there's nothing there. Yeah. But I'm is that at the end of the test or is that the first thing he does? It's the last thing. So that trousers up out the door. Because he knows it ends conversation, he knows it's a bit of a faux pas, the, you know, the doctor says, oh I better not kick off with a finger up the arse, what I, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll start on with the, uh, you know, the head, and then we're down and go, oh, one final thing Mr. Pilkerton. Um, so, so Rob- He, dro he drops his keys and he goes, pick them up, and as you bend over- will, will you be doing this Rob, is this what you're like open to do? Um, you do all I'll, these- I'll have to do it at some point, all doctors do it at some point, no matter what they're specialising. So the first one, is he another doctor there to sort of make sure you're doing it right? Not, not dentists. <laughs> no, but do you know, do you know what I mean? doctors anyway. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? Like, normally it's like a, a co-pilot will have someone with him for the first one. So when yeah. you, when you put your first finger in, yeah. will someone be there going, right, you just want to move well, to the left I've, I've already it. done it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. See, that's, that's the thing with a student, you're learning. So you get people teaching and, and you learn on these things. Can I just point out, uh, Rob, I, I think I'm right in assuming that, uh, uh, you have a glove on. Yeah. And there's lubrication. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt. No. There you go. What but, are you worried about, but Carl? who's this person who, who everyone's testing on in your class? <laughs> it's not one person! It's one person. There's like, when a patient comes in and they've got a problem, <laughs> your, your boss, the, like, consultant, he does his finger up, and if yeah, he finds something, he goes to the patient, is it alright if the student has a feel as well? Then well, the student what? puts on a glove, puts the leave on the glove, and sticks his finger up, and sees what he comes out with. <laughs> if, uh, Rob, I wish you could see Carl's face. I mean, uh, he just, uh, his face when you said, and he goes, says, uh, can this fellow have a go as well? He looked horrified that it was, a, he thought it was a free-for-all, like there's a queue of people trying on gloves and going, let's have a go. That looks good up there. What have you found? No, I mean, how come you had to sort of, is it not something you could test on yourself rather than waiting for other people to come in? <laughs> because then you know, because you have an awkward can... position to get to really. <laughs> well, but you can have a good rummage then without feeling too awkward, but to, f to sort of have a go on, on your first patient when you don't really know what you're looking for anyway, do you know what I mean? Never really thought about it. Because you don't, if, if you've never done it before, you pop your finger in there, and you've got a sort of look, you've got to have an expression on your face like you know what, you, what you're what finding. Well, they can't see what you look, they can't see you your face. There. You've got the, the big boss consultant there going, and now move your finger there and you'll probably feel this. Because he's just done it, he knows what's there. Well, what, what oh, so you're, he's already had a go, he's yeah. had a feel, and he's going, right, if you feel to the right, that's the conglomerate yeah. or whatever. Mm, the conglomerate, yeah. The, his conglomerate is in perfect right, working well, order. Uh, well, that's, I'm still Thank you, Rob. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to go go through this. Um, Carl is probably the worst patient you'll ever encounter in your medical career. Good luck mm. with your finals and uh, and thanks very much. And uh, do you know any female doctors who do this? Or? Thank you. XFM 104.9. Thank you. It's the night time on XFM 104.9. Uh, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. Um, and uh, what we, what, is, is it time? Is I it think, time? I think so. Yeah. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right then, so, uh, there's this monkey, right, right, in Canada, it's in a zoo in, uh, Toronto, I think it is. Mm. Um, his name's Pascal, 
right? And uh, what happened was all the, the people in the zoo uh, sort of said, you know, what can we do? Uh, sort of spice the day up a bit. Right? Yeah. So they left. Embellishing. Uh, no way this is a new story. Let him read the news. Let him yeah. read the news. Okay. So they. they left. Any dates? Just uh, let him read the news. Well, right? I, 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 interrupt Moira Stewart. It was announced for news today. <laughs> no, because she always says today, <laughs> so you know it's news. She doesn't say, right, there was a monkey, right? <laughs> right well, in I, Canada, on, right? Just finish okay. the okay. A couple of weeks ago, in the zoo in Canada. Right. Um, Jesus. They got a camcorder. Right. And they said, let's, let's leave it for the, uh, for the monkey to have a, a play with, right? So, um, anyway, they, they passed Wh it around. One of BAFTA. And a couple of chimps and that were rubbish at it. They were like filming the floor and all that, and the fingers were always in shot and stuff like that, right? But anyway, there was one, this, this one chimp called Pascal, right? Who, uh... Annoys me that he called them monkeys, though. He they're was, not monkeys, they're he apes. Was, he, was a, he was a dab hand at it, right? He was like, <laughs> uh, filming stuff, really good shots, you know, sort of nice mood and that. He used the lighting properly and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, he didn't! Just let, is this the news? What are you talking about? Is this the news? <laughs> oh, this God, so Steve, anyway. it's so annoying. You know it annoys me so much. <laughs> Things like that. He was a dab hand at it. He was doing really good shots. It really but, annoys me. Let's hear the anyway, news. Anyway, right, so he started, uh, at night, like when the zookeepers went home, he started filming like other monkeys on on the go, like, like whilst they were at it, right? And he was filming them and what have you. <coughs> the and Ron Jeremy of I the zoo. It. You yeah. know it's gonna end up on the web. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the zookeepers came in the next day, and it's like, let's see what shots he's got. Anyway, he's got all this, like, you know, all these monkeys at it and what have you. So, oh, um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, honestly, so, you so, don't know what this is doing to me, Steve. So, Can I stop him now? So they thought, like, uh, actually, there's a few monkeys who, who aren't at it enough. Do you know what I mean? They have problems or what have you, so let's give them the videos. That is so it. untrue! This is so untrue! So, it's so untrue that it was filmed by a monkey! So it's what happened so then, untrue! Right? Rick, I don't know so, who to believe. <laughs> Oh so God! Oh, you're talking so much shit again. So you must know that's not true. There's so no way. There's a load of tapes out. Look at honest. me! Look at me! Don't keep talking. Look at me! Yeah. You must know that's not true. Can it's we just hear, hear the end of this news? You. you had a go at me last week because I didn't have the full story. I've got the full story. You're still not happy. There is no way mm. that b by chance one all this. Oh, what should we do? Let's give him a camcorder. That could happen. Right. He then films him at it. That might happen. It might happen, but I don't think he'd keep the camera still. Uh, 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 two. They go. Hold on. Oh, yeah, this is good stuff. This is good shit. This porn's good shit. Anyway, Look at so that. He's got a lovely shot. Yeah, yeah. So oh, this got, is ridiculous. Let me just recap because I, I lost my way there. So the monkey has filmed the the monkey porn, yeah. and now he's, they're showing it to the other monkeys. Is he directing? Can you hear him just, saying stuff? Can like, you go? <coughs> it's like, just like you know, chimp pimp one, two, and three, and all the rest of it, right? <laughs> but anyway, so they've got all these other tapes um, because what happened was um, they said he's quite good at this. Oh, and, and the animals God. and the animals are uh, happy having him around because he's not a human. He's just one of the gang. Do you know what I mean? So they started putting him in with other things like, you know, ostriches. Right. Uh, and talking <laughs> shit. I, I there was, I, so, and do you know they have a problem with pandas in, in Japan? Yeah. So they've, they've sent him out there, filming, uh, filming a bit of, where are you going? It's, you, you, honestly, you, you, you really annoy me. There's Come no on, way this is happening. Can we it's just hear the end? Why can't he just find a real story about a, 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 a monkey? Let's hear I mean, the, the end. At the end is he's really, that is, he's going to China, he's, he's filming the pandas and what No, he's it. not! They wouldn't send a so, monkey director! Oh, they would not that. send a monkey director! Pointless. Well, Bruce Springsteen, possibly the greatest rock song of all time, I don't know. Oh. Big words. Big words indeed, but I, I, I echo them. Um, well, we're running out of time, we've got to get on with, um, with the show, it's, uh, near the end. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope the scientists stuck in a big, I don't know, hut in the middle of nowhere in pitch darkness, ten of them. Um, oh, I uh, imagine they've been fascinated, Rick, by the finger up the arse discussion. We had Chinese don't age well, gingers, coke. yeah, gingers, all that. Um, the big fat kid. Well, actually, they're, they're, they're probably securing the knowledge that if they want to kill some time and it's dark, there's nothing better than stick your finger up someone else's yeah, arse. Exactly. So uh, enjoy that. But oh, uh, they, uh, they've been hanging on for rockbusters clues, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Here's the answer. So give us the clue again quickly. Alright, so the first one was, uh, the fella let his wife know how he, uh, got the bruise on his legs. Go on. Right, that was, that was, uh, Courtney Nee Love. Yeah, Court, Court, Courtney Love. So that's Courtney Love. Is uh, that that's, that's, that's the first one, CL. So that one's fine. Uh, the second one, uh, that pot. Oh, what, what am I doing? Letting that one just go? Just let it go, just let it go. Am I just letting yeah. that go? So uh, annoyingly, we haven't got time to take issue with it. Uh, okay. That Potter lad, he, uh, He's got a lot of bottle, hasn't he? Doing all that stuff with the wizards and that. Go on. That's, uh, 
Brave Harry, yeah, the bravery. Bravery, current sort of XFM band, the bravery, Brave Harry, that works as well. No, it doesn't. And the last one. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't work. The Buddhists. It doesn't work. Won't be able to get in their temple without doesn't these. Doesn't work. Brave Harry. Brave Harry. Uh, it doesn't uh, work. Brave Harry. The Brave Buddhists, Harry. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. TM. That's yeah. the monk keys. Right. So who got all, who got all them? Uh, the monk keys. Who got who got all them? Right. The, which band are called the Monk Keys? The monkeys. Oh, the monkeys. Yeah, the monkeys. Right. So uh, who's who's the winner this week? The winner this week is Gina. Well, I'm, we're letting that go. Yeah. Gina got them all right. Uh, I think her text said she was from Horrorstead. I don't know. I've never heard of that place, but uh, I assume that's right. But Gina, you win that selection. I can't believe she got them. I cannot believe she got them. But she goes uh, wins those and also goes into the the prize draw. And we'll have um, six people competing for that uh, original Matt Groening thing. If you go to RickyGervais.com, you can see Matt actually doing that. We've got a signed Nigel Tufnell and uh, um, original drawing of us as Flanimals. Um, you want to see xfm.co.uk slash ricky if you yeah. want to have a look at the picture and, and uh well that's it it's it's three right. o'clock i'm with steve merchant and carl pilkington more drivel next time a shaven monkey right.